Yes, you are tuned into Cinema Hits and Misses here on WMPG. I'm Dawn. I'm John. And I'm Ryan. And we're here 8 to 8.30 on 90.9 FM. And if you want to give us a call at 780-4909, that's 780-4909. So, Ryan, why did we open up with The Mighty Prince? Because that is exactly how Kingsman The Golden Circle opens up, along with, you know, Purple Rain. But I thought it would be fitting to have that playing. So what are we talking about tonight on the show? Well, besides uh, Kingsman, the Golden Circle, which have been already been had already been mentioned, we're also going to talk about Brad's status and Stronger. Ooh, and what do you guys want to start off with? Let's talk about Brad's status. All right. Brad is a 47-year-old man, married, and has a son who's getting ready for college. Brad and his son begin the movie heading out to visit Boston, which one of the colleges is Brad's alma mater, which then has Brad to start to think about his life and if he's happy with his life and his job. This sends him into an existential crisis as he compares his accomplishments and wondering what his life would have been if he had changed. This then becomes a concern when he's trying to help his son get a college interview. He's able to do so with the help of one of his old friends, but he must then have dinner with him and this reunion causes Brad to see the people he's been comparing his life to in real life and see if it's really the same. Brad must learn if his life could be better or if he should be happy the way he ha- of what he has. Brad's status is written and directed by Mike White, stars Ben Stiller, Jenna Fisher, Michael Sheen, Luke Wilson, and Austin Abrams. So, Don, what did you think of Brad's status? You guys know that I'm not a fan of voiceover, mm. but you kind of need it in this one because you're living in Brad's head. So for going into it, it was like, Ugh. but actually not bad. Mm-hmm. You know, I could relate with some of the things he was going through because, you know, who out here doesn't compare yourself to other people or kind of mm-hmm. run these dialogues? So some of that was kind of fun to, to realize, oh, yeah, other people do this. And, you know, recognize that you hold yourself up to standards that aren't always real it's, yeah. it's you make the your beliefs become your reality mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so i think that's what happens here to to brad's character Move yeah on. yeah i mean overall i thought it was fine <laughs> i think that's the best way to describe it it's that de- it's very introspective mostly for brad obviously and it's very quite existential too uh he's very he's questioning a lot of things in his life and thinking like you know what it almost like what is worth like what is his life worth in comparison to his friends from college believing in some competition that that's what life is but it may not be or at least that's how i think but you know if you keep trying to compare yourself you just it weighs you down that you can totally see that throughout the entire movie he's just it's just weighing himself down with negativity and pessim- pessimism to a degree where it's just like i get it but oh my god <laughs> i'm over it <laughs> yeah i think it with the voiceover, I think it does a good job with showing depression and also just anxiety. Because there's moments in the movie with the voiceover when he's talking about, like, something good happens. He's like, oh, this is really good. And then, like, it kicks in. He's like, oh, wait. Maybe, I, like, why am I thinking about this? Or, like, why am I so shit selfish about thinking of my own self? And I told Don um, that I felt this after seeing this movie, because I'm a huge fan of Ben Stiller. And one of his movies, The Secret Life of Walter Mitty, is, like, one of my favorite movies. And this movie felt like a more realistic and super grounded version of that movie. Because in both movies, you have Ben Stiller, who daydreams about different things. In Walter Mitty, it's more like wild like adventures. And this one's more thinking about his, um, his college friends and imagining what they're doing. Um, and imagining himself there. And there's even moments like... In, in both films where he's caught up in a daydream and one of like either his son or someone he's with snaps him out of it and he's like oh like he doesn't realize how it's like just drawing him out um i think ben Stiller did a good job um i like him more in dramatic roles Mm -hmm. because we definitely seen him in like zoolander and tropic thunder but i think this one it's nice to see him more grounded yeah, well, you know, he comes from comedic parents, yes. so, you know, for him to be of that more dramatic role, it, it takes a lot. I mean, yeah, mm-hmm. the, all the Fokker movies. Yes, yes. You know, and, and like I said, Zoolander, uh, Night at the Museum. 
here in Brad's status, he has that gravity again. And, mm-hmm. you know, it, it, it's interesting when he's going on. He, he gets a, a friendly ear in one of his son's friends. Yes. And he goes on and on and on about his life. And she's like, she call, you know, calls him out. Yeah. And basically, this is a first world problem, but, mm-hmm. you know. So that's kind of fun. So, you know, I, I think there are parts of Brad's status that no matter your age, you can relate to. Mm-hmm. And I think there's a very poignant moment towards the end, and we won't spoil it, but when his son, played by Austin Abrams, kind of brings him back to head, so, you know, basically saying, whose opinion really matters to you, Dad? Yeah. You know, so mm-hmm. that was really, I thought, a, a, a well-written moment and a well-acted moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm just looking through my list here, and there's, there's actually a lot more cons than I do have pros. Mm-hmm. Um, but to just touch on again, I do think Ben Still was probably the strongest part of the film. And I feel like everybody else who just kind of shows up for a brief moment just to be like, oh, we have to, you know, get this point across. So let's have a phone conversation. Half this film is done in phone conversations. And it gets kind of old real fast. It almost felt like they ran out of money during production and they're like well we could just send a quick we could send a crew out there shoot you with a phone and then you'll be good to go Mm -hmm. well part of that is that people can't film at harvard anymore oh really i didn't know that i didn't know that Yeah, there was a 1980 film there were a lot of films that were filmed there until like i think there was a 1980 film and i can't remember what it was but they basically destroyed part of the old elms oh so no more filming so everything had to be outside or oh. substituted. Mm-hmm. But. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, okay. That's maybe <laughs> that's where the budget went. <laughs> um, I feel like there were some characters. I feel like maybe we just didn't need at all, and especially because some don't even some don't even have speaking roles. No. Um, or some just show up to just talk for a brief moment, and they really don't have anything else to provide to the film. Like Jenna Fisher, poor her. I feel like she's had absolutely nothing to do. Yeah. Whereas, like, you know, you have this different actress who was a friend of Brad's son, who I felt like had more to do, but not, you know, at least provided a more intriguing conversation and angle to the story, where it's just like, oh, the supportive wife. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's how I feel, at least. Yeah, I think, I definitely felt like Jenna Fisher was underused in the film. At the beginning, there's a funny banter with between the two of when you begin to see um, Brad's psyche. And kind of like his inner thinking and when he talks to people and they're just like, shut up. What are you talking about? Just, just don't worry about it. Like, so, um, yeah, because she's at the beginning and then she's sp- yeah, sparse through it. I'm a huge fan of her from like The Office. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I was just kind of bummed that I didn't get to see more of her. Yeah, so I think part of it was it felt like, all right, these guys showed up for friendship. Or, yeah, for friendship. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe they're friends of Mike White. They want to be part of this production. Yep great and maybe the budget dollars was paying yeah. for them to be there and jermaine clement who yeah. we barely saw yeah is, he was probably he probably filmed that in like new zealand where he's from because it was like his scenes were so far away yeah i mean that and the luke wilson scenes mm-hmm. i mean could have been anywhere yeah um the michael sheen pretty much being what you expect him mm-hmm. to be yeah so that was and, kind of gratuitous and also his use in the film is really just to like clean everything up it felt like mm-hmm. I, yeah and i was kind of waiting for that scene because i'd seen the trailer um and i was like where's that scene and i was like oh it's here oh that was like yeah it was really quick it's really, and also i mean from a filmmaking pr- perspective it's kind of it was very much samey where it's just they only kept two angles pretty much and it never really changed more than that and i was hoping for maybe like just a wide shot of both of them talking or something just yeah. to break up the flow of like ben stiller michael sheen ben stiller michael sheen yeah, what I'll say is I'm a huge I'm a huge fan of Mike White, and the movie that we're talking about is Brad Status. And if you'd like to call in about this movie or the two other films we'll be talking about tonight, call in at seven eight zero four nine zero nine. That's seven eight zero four nine zero nine. Um, the writer director Mike White, I'm a fan of. He wrote Orange County, and he wrote School of Rock, and s- some other films and some other TV shows. And I like his writing. But he's not a strong director. I know this is, I think this is his first time directing. Yeah, it is, yeah. That it felt very, yet, yeah, um, samey. Um, he wrote the Emoji movie, so I can say it was meh. <laughs> um, so I was excited to see it. And I think the voiceover in like 
the tone of the trailer didn't fully match the f- tone of the movie. Um, so it kind of, if there's a Ben Stiller movie I'd want to see, it would be Secret Life of Walter Mitty or like, um, Tropic Thunder more than this movie, I think. Yeah, I, I think I agree with you, Ryan. You could probably pass on this film, maybe check it out later. It won't necessarily be fully uplifting, I guess, but <laughs> it definitely makes you think. Yeah, and it's one that certainly would fit any size of viewing format. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not a, oh, you need to see this because X. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's nice to be enveloped in a theater, and, you know, we don't want to discourage you from going for a film, but yeah, if you're, you're looking at your budget dollars, this is not a... One to rush out and see. Yeah, I'm guessing it's probably going to be put on Netflix, I think. It's one of those kind of, kind of small indie movies that they usually pick up. Yeah. So, what do you think, guys? Ready for Stronger? Yeah, let's talk... Oh, as my notes suddenly go away. There we go. We're back. So, Stronger. The film tells the true story of Jeff Bauman, a man whose legs were lost as a result of the Boston bo- Boston Marathon bombings in 2013. We witness his journey of recovery and how he also deals with personal troubles. So it's also based on a best-selling book, which was also written by Bauman. And the script for the film was written by John Polono and was directed by David Gordon Green and stars Jake Gyllenhaal, Tatiana Manslani, Miranda Richardson, and Richard Lane Jr. And currently has a 96% on Rotten Tomatoes and 90% of audiences liked it. So Ryan, what'd you think of Stronger? I really enjoyed it. Um, This is now the second movie, and I believe we're getting another one about the Boston bombing um last one was last year's patriots day i enjoy this a lot more than patriots day Mm -hmm. and i think patriots day took a tone with the director and mark Wahlberg as a very tense thriller trying to find the bomber and like very like action heavy this one looks at the aftermath and the people in who were um affected Patriot Day is about people who are involved. And I think this one, especially Jake Gyllenhaal, does a remarkable job of showing someone who's gone through trauma and with his character, because what, I don't know if this is a spoiler since it was in the news that he was one of the people who helped identify the bombers, that he became like a city hero and him dealing with the fact that he doesn't feel like a hero. He didn't, he feels... Like, he didn't do anything with also the addition of how he lost his legs in trying to come back to normalcy. And the effects are astounding for this film. Like, and Jake Gyllenhaal does an amazing job. What do you think, Don? Uh, he does. Um, because what you get is this inner tor- turmoil that you see across his face that he's put into a position as a hero. Yet, in his own mind, what has he done heroic? Mm -hmm. You know, he he lost his legs, all right? And, yeah, he's a symbol of survival, but, you know, yeah, we'll get the people coming up to him. Yeah, we'll get them. Yeah, we beat the terrorists. You know, here's a guy who lost his limbs. He's lost his lifestyle, and people are are promoting him as this, this icon of, you know, beating the terrorists mm-hmm. where in you know he just he's trying to it, it's difficult for him to justify this and Jillian Hall you can see these emotions run across his face and you know between being very taciturn and kind of the thumbs up mm-hmm. and, and you can imagine I think I remember images of the the real life Bauman doing that that basically you you catch glimpses of him and a very dysfunctional family that yeah. he comes from and i think they did very well with that with oh, the, the casting yes. of that miranda richardson as the mother and clancy brown as the father divorced parents and that whole boston kind of backdrop we've seen in in other other films and i think they they did well with that and also tatiana maslani, maslani who as um, Jeff's ex-girlfriend who comes back and doesn't really know her role in this. Mm-hmm. Um, it ju- just very poignant. But for me, it's also one that it pushes certain buttons. Yep. I am going to, I need the audience to feel this, so I'm going to do that. Mm-hmm. You know, so that I felt was a little heavy-handed for me, but still overall I enjoyed the film. Yeah. Yeah, because okay. obviously, you know, based on an incredible true story yeah. and backed with, I thought, 
performances overall were fantastic. I mean, it may be too early to be talking about, you know, Oscars things, but Jill Hall definitely deserved it for Nightcrawler. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I think hopefully he could get one and maybe even Tatiana mm-hmm. Aslani as well. I thought she, they, they really carried the film throughout. The, that being said, <laughs> my only little, like, criticism or issue I had is just the pacing it drags. It's almost two hours, but there's definitely a moment where I felt like, oh, it's it's going to end now, and then it mm-hmm. didn't. And I'm like, okay, well, we can keep going. But the problem is, like, when thinking about it, like, I don't know what scene I would cut. I guess yeah. that would be the thing. But it, the pacing is a little inconsistent for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, the, the, the dangling of public opportunities and people taking advantage of him, you know, it, it felt, oh, yeah, I get it. Okay, yeah, I get it. But like you, John, I don't know where where you would kind of ne- trim that up a little bit. I'd have to rewatch it. Yeah, I think like it's it's tough because yeah, there are definitely like those heavy-handed points and I think there's scenes in it where like you see him struggle. I, there was many points when he just falls over that the people in my, in my audience were just like, "Oh, like they could feel it." And um but yeah, I don't know I'm trying to think where it, because all the points are very important to the story or like scenes like there's points when he has like PS PTSD flashbacks, which like don't come out of nowhere, but you're like, you're, you're wondering kind of like, is something going to come back for him? Because even though they show what I really enjoyed about this kind of with that is that the Boston bombing happens right at the beginning of the movie and we see some flashbacks, but it just jumps right into the aftermath of him. And I think that was really smart. Um, but then, yeah, again, I can't think of... Because they do such a good job at the beginning just to jump jump you in. Yeah. When you were mentioning uh, possible recognition at award season, John, mm-hmm. um, it may also be kind of a um, tiebreaker between he and an upcoming movie with Andrew Garfield. Because Andrew Garfield's going to... I can't think of the name Breathe. of the film. Breathe, yeah, with Andy Serkis directing. Yep. Directing. Yeah. Yep. Is that the one with the wheelchair? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So, yes. so those may be neck and neck. And yeah. It's, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of the parade of the terribles at times. Mm-hmm. Like, all right, who did a better a wounded yeah. person better? But it, it doesn't discount his performance because it was no. a very very solid performance. Yeah, I here. think since Nightcrawler, like Jake John Hall's been like every role that he's had is just pushing and pushing, and he's definitely like one of my favorite actors because every um, performance he does is so different. But also, especially in this film. I forgot I was watching Jake Gyllenhaal because he was able, he lost a lot of weight and just the emotion, like you said, on his face, like he looks nothing like the look, the kid in Darn Darko or like prisoners. And he just does a fabulous or job. Or Prince of Persia. Or Prince of Persia. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, taking, he's a leading man look with a character actor yes sensibility so he's really honing that more mm-hmm. so that really shows up well and you know again tatiana maslani who is f- fabulous and from black yes who, who is again showing her that she has a chop, yes. her chop. Yes. so i think we'll see a lot more of both of them mm-hmm. and of course the movie that we're talking about is stronger here on cinema hits and misses if you've seen that or our next movie kingsman golden circle give us a call at 780-4909 7804909. So our last film of the evening. A few years ago, we were introduced to the world of Kingsman, a covert British intelligent agency formed by peered gentlemen of means that operated independently from any government rule. Their goal, keep the world safe while being stylishly attired and displaying well-bred manners. Until there was Eggsy, a rash streetwise recruit that set the honored organization on its ear. In Kingsman, The Golden Circle, we catch up with Eggsy, who's still with Clara, his rescued Scandinavian princess, and covertly operating with the Kingsman. He's the new Galahad, taking over the title from his deceased mentor, Harry Hart. There's also a new Arthur and other replaced Natalie-attired knights. Merlin is still holding the fort, or tailor shop, as the master of gadgets and technology. One evening, while on his way to meet Clara, Eggsy is attacked by former Kingsman trainee, Charlie. The attack is set up by up-and-coming drug war lady, Poppy, whose base is an undisclosed ruin in the middle of a jungle. She's preparing for war on all fronts and is targeting the Kingsmen, destroying the headquarters and eliminating agents. 
All that seems to be left are Eggsy and Merlin, until they find a doomsday message in one of their hidden chambers that leads them to a bottle of expensive aged whiskey and a clue to travel to the United States to meet up with possible allies in the organization called the Statesmen. In order to save the world they, and defeat the common enemy, they might need to come together. So the stars, Golden King, Kings and Golden Circle stars Taryn Egerton, Taryn Egerton, Colin Firth, Julianne Moore, Mark Strong, Halle Berry, and the oh Channing Tatum, Jeff Bridges, and the fabulous Elton John. <laughs> All right, John, what do you think of Kings and the Golden Circle? Well, I'm going to start off saying what I uh, about the first one. Kingsman the Secret Service. I loved that film. It was one of my favorites of 2015. I thought it was this hilarious action-packed like parody slash spoof of spy films and it had this like just enough complexity to give it a little bit of depth to make us actually care about the characters. And this film kind of lacked that, at least in my opinion. I found myself a little bit disappointed with this one. But granted, like right off the right off the bat when it like launches you right into this great action sequence backed by uh, what was it called? Let's go crazy, Bear Let's Prince. go crazy. Thank you. There's a lot to think about because a lot of my mind about this film. But yeah, I like it, it's it as a strong start, and then it kind of just weakens for me throughout. It has some little moments here and there. I think most of the action is the main thing that holds it together, and there are some funny moments. Elton John is really surprising, um, but overall, I found like it lacked a lot of what made the first film great. Yeah, I think. What I told John is I compare this movie to the first and the second season of True Detective. When you have a f- film or a t- TV show that the first part blows you out of the water, you weren't expecting anything, You your expectations are so high. And when the second one doesn't deliver, it doesn't say that the product wasn't bad. It's just it didn't exceed your expectations and it didn't do... What most sequels should do, well, take the original material and make it better. Um, One scene in particular from the first one is the notorious church sequence. Mm -hmm. Um, It's super violent, but super fun. Um, Going into this movie, I'm like, okay, how are they going to top that that scene? Well, they try to do it three times, which kind of defeats the purpose of one giant scene because even though I had seen Kingsman for a while, I did remember there's not a lot of big action sequences until that scene or even the ending fight. And this scene had so many different ones that you're like, oh, how are you going to do it? And, and then it would end, and, and you'd be like, wait, was that, was that, was that it? Because that wasn't as good. And there was, like, scenes that I felt didn't fit. There's a, there's a sequence when um, they go to the Glastonbury Festival, which I'm a huge fan of, like, British music. And I was like, oh, cool. Like, maybe there'll be a cameo. You can see where the CGI is. And, like, they quickly, like, went there. I'm like, oh, man. So, yeah, Don, what did you think? Yeah. I, like you guys, I'm a, fa- I'm a fan of the first one. I thought it was a lot of fun. This one felt like a a, gar- a well-worn garment that's kind of worn out its edges. That's a... It's a good analogy. You know, it's it's, uh, the intro scene Mm -hmm. where Eggsy and Charlie are racing through the streets of London. You know, some of that slow-mo flip over the car. Yeah, it looks great, but we've seen better action. I mean, in the Hitman's Bodyguard earlier this summer, that kind of did similar things and much better. This had places it could have gone, and even with the Statesman, Mm-hmm. Severely disappointed with the statesman. Oh my god! Yeah. Wasted potential, especially yeah. one cast member. But I don't know if that would be a spoiler or not. Might so. be a spoiler. Yeah. But that being said, there is one statesman I think who kind of bumps through the rest and doesn't even have billing on there. Pedro Pascal, unless you mentioned him. I didn't mention him. Yes, but he's in it. Uh, mm-hmm. If you remember from Game of Thrones or Narcos. Yes. And he's great in it. Uh, it's a shame that he gets. A l- I mean, I wish all the statesmen could get more time but the film is nearly two and a half hours i think it's like two yeah, two hours 21 minutes it's a long movie. but they have to go through a lot of things and they like are trying to get everyone in at once and that that may be the problem there just may be too much going on they could have cut cut out some of the clara stuff yeah the princess stuff that annoyed me so <laughs> so much. And you needed you needed it to get to a point because yep. there's a plot point there but way too much of this 
to go on that, and I won't spoil anything, but it's in the trailer how they attack the Kingsman. There is someone that has taken out of this movie, and instead of having her in it, they have Clara. And I was talking to John like over the weekend when we were discussing it. If you kept the other actress instead of Clara, I feel it would have been a better movie and a much stronger female lead. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. If anything, this movie feels rushed because it did so well back when it came out in February out of nowhere and it had great success. So Matthew Vaughn's like, well, let's do it again. And they wrote it so fast and they filmed it last year and here it is now and it's rushed. Just like True Detective Season 2 where you have such a good – you don't let the creator take the time and just make it the best product you can instead of just like, let's just do it. Yeah. Yeah. Now – I'm not up on all my Marvel, mm-hmm. but of course, isn't this also a, a graphic series? Or yes, it's, it's by Mark Miller, who also did uh, Watchmen? Question? No, um, no, we might no. be we another might. Matthew Vaughn movie, yeah. um, superhero Kick movie. Kick-Ass. Kick-Ass, yes. Yeah. Okay, so, because yeah, he did that. He did. Um, he also was in the X-Men universe with yep. uh, First Class and Days of Future Past. And Stardust. And Stardust and Layer Cake. So he's, he's done a lot. So And he, he, he's, again, he's co-written this with Jane Goldman, mm-hmm. as he did the first one. So, you know, not knowing if, if this story was part of source material or original content. Um, I th- I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm not sure as well. As, a, like, as original content, then good job. But I think one thing that, as you were reading that, um, um, the villain... Julianne, um, yeah, I'm trying to figure out why she attacked the Kingsman, because I don't think that there was a reason for that, and she wasn't as a strong, like, Samuel L. Jackson was an amazing villain and a hilarious, Mm -hmm. and this one, and hers... Sophia Botella. And and Sophia Botella. It looked like they were trying to rehash that, but... The quirk of Samuel Jackson having a lisp and being a supervillain was so cool, and Julian Moore yeah, having, having a 50s that is retro fifties. I mean, that was that, that was, was fun, fun, but they didn't play up on it well enough. Yeah, she and the Bruce Greenwood president scenes. Yeah. Oh a lot God, of yeah. a lot of disconnect in this guy. So it's you know, if you're a fan of this, then yeah, maybe it's worth it. But maybe it's not. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's, they could have done so much more with this movie. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, box office shows people w- were wanting to see this. Yeah, we'll see if it has legs. I think that's yeah. the big thing. I, I don't. I mean, granted, my audience seemed to like it. Yeah, so. mine did too. And I think Matthew Vaughn did say that he'd make a third one. Um, I'm hoping that he kind of learns from not to rush it. And bring back Elton John. Yes. <laughs> because he, you know, he was awesome. He like, made still the show. Yeah. Um. I forget. I knew he was billed for it, but he they never showed him in the trailer, which was nice. And it was just like, oh, Elton John. Oh, it's funny to see you fight. Okay, you know? cool. And yeah, I mean, Jeff Bridges can walk on and mumble a few lines and just be yeah. so cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and you know, of course, Halle Berry was yes. a chan- yeah, I think we said with Channing Tatum. Yep. Yeah. So. Kind of, kind of a miss for me and mm-hmm. yeah. for you guys too. So. Yeah, quite, quite the disappointment. So, so we're wrapping up here on cinema hits and misses. I think that for Brad's status, we're all kind of meh. Yeah. For stronger, stronger let's say check strong, out. Yeah. Yep. And for Kingsman, again, if you go see it, matinee. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. 